Hello and welcome to another episode of Remember When with Diona Dory, a podcast where I, Diona Dory, ask my guests to remember when something happened in pop culture history that made them laugh or cry or shit themselves. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, for a few weeks only, I'm left. I'm going to bang on about my show, Bridesmaids of Northern Ireland, which is basically sold out in most tour venues except Derry. Of course, it isn't. Um, but everywhere else is basically sold out. So the Opera House and Derry are the two theatres that you can still get tickets to see Bridesmaids of Northern Ireland this October. And Home Alone in the Opera House is also on sale and it's flying out. So if you like laughing, book tickets. And if you don't like laughing, stay at home. Um, my guest this week might be annoyed because I had his wife on before him a few weeks ago. And you've known me longer. Well, like her better. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, it is BBC Video Ulster presenter Colin Valley. It's weird. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that what time you? Have you seen me as BBC Video Ulster presenter? Broadcaster, hero, mm. dad, all round good guy. Uh, do you remember the first time we met? Neither do I. Christ, no. But I do you really remember don't. the first time we sort of done something together? That sounds weird as well. Was that for a well-known cider company who were sponsoring a comedy festival, or was that your husband? What was that about? Was your husband. See, I've done things with your husband. You've done things with my wife. Whoa, that Whoa, sounds rude. That Whoa. sounds so fun. <laughs> Whoa, car keys in a bowl. Let's do more of that. Car keys in a bowl. Where no, do, we, do you remember we... we did a sketch together for my grip, my sketch group FNT that I was in years ago? We recorded a sketch and you were in it. Yes, I do remember that. Weirdly, yeah. I literally just remembered it as we started. It talking was. It was kind of like you. You were doing your own version of Saturday Night Live. Only it yes. was a bit. Budget Saturday Night Live, wasn't it? Rude. Yeah, but yeah. It, yeah, mm. I mean, it was in Belfast. It was in the black box, and uh, right. we did a like a like a two hour long sketch show every like a couple of months, whatever. But we did live sketches, and we did recorded sketches that we were playing on screen. But I remember what was the sketch you ran? Jenny Curran was also on it. Yes. But what was it? I, can't I have remember no, I have no idea. I do remember that you kind of. I was working for a different radio station at the time, and you were kind of just hand picking people who would do it. And I was like, yeah, let's have a bit of crack with it. And it was a class show that. It was really good. I genuinely remember it being really good. Yeah. Do you know what? We all got good, but I work out of it. Yeah. But I remember the first, like we got, um, like there was, a, do you remember the production company Green Inc? I do. I work for them well, to, they, this, to this day. Yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah. But they like, sort of like were interested in our sketch show, but we were all so young and naive and they, that's all they were, was interested in the sketch show and they were like, oh, you guys are good. Like we'll keep an eye on you and we'd like to like, maybe they give us some parts and like sketchy mm. and stuff, the BBC show. And they were like, um, we sort of will come see you, your show and like we'll, we'll maybe like develop this as a format to try and pitch it as a TV show eventually of like an up and coming sketch script or whatever. But we took that and we ran with that, Connor. We we printed <laughs> one of the guys. Soon to be on the BBC. We had it all over our posters like that we like we had like um the Green Ink logo and like uh. BBC talent and all. And we, one of the guys printed out like little mock contracts did anybody see this? Anyone from the powers that be? Did, did, did Green Ink ever see it? No, because they'd have told us to fuck off. Oh, right, 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 okay. We have photographs of each of us sat at this table, like, signing this shitty contract that we made up. That doesn't exist. <laughs> that we made with ourselves. Do you still keep in touch with the Green Ink people? Hate them. I'm joking. I, 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 no, I, I do. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, me too, no, no. me too, yeah. yeah. I was speaking to one of them yeah, yesterday, day before yesterday. Just don't remind Just them. Just don't remind them, yeah. <laughs> about yeah. that shit. Yeah, but it's weird, like, all that stuff we go through, because... I was at Queen's, right? And I did drama at Queen's, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of so this I. industry, I know, mm -hmm. sort of crosses over. Mm -hmm. Like, there's all the, there's people that you know, yeah. and weirdly, the presented world, and then the acting world, and then the comedy so world. when did you graduate from Queen's? To 2001, I think. Yeah, right. 2000, 2001. And who would be the people there who are still working in that field now that you know from then? So, this is the, this is, I love... You obviously being off of the Dairy Girls fraternity, very, very, very good character. Still makes me laugh to this Thanks day. Thanks very much. Lisa? Yes? Was in my class. Was she? Claire Rafferty, who yes. you've had in this pod, was in my class. Kerry Quinn? Kerry Quinn. Uh, was, she came in, I think, a year later, right? But same class. We all ended up doing stuff together. What? Ross Anderson. You yes. will know Ross brilliantly from um, he the was on the cabaret. AMPM and cabaret. He was a singer. And Kathy Pryor, who was head of costume, costume on Dairy Girls, all in the same class. All of us in the same what was class. was in the water that I year? I do not That know. was not in the water the year I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. All in the same run. That's an outstanding alumni. 
absolutely bonkers. And then, I, but I'm, I'm maybe telling that story a bit too much now. I'm saying that a lot, yeah. and you can tell that maybe I'm the bottom rung of that ladder now, where they're all a wee bit higher, and they're going. He's still telling that fucking story. Jesus Christ. Right, okay, yeah, we were in yeah. class with you, Connor. Yeah, yeah, you yeah know well us, done. Fuck off. Well done. But can you imagine all the other losers that in that year <laughs> that haven't done anything? What does that even mean? <laughs> that are just like, who are running around telling the same story as you. But when you tell it, it's fine because you're a successful broadcaster. But when they tell it, you know, on their way home from McDonald's, I didn't say if they were having their daughter there or working there. I'm not going to slag anyone who works at McDonald's because Absolutely, they get I'm free not. burgers. I'm all for that. But like, if they're not doing the thing that you're doing and they're like telling that story, it's yeah, a wee bit shitter. They're, they're, they're living their own life. Yeah. They're telling their own stories to their kids and they're having their own experiences. Mine just happens to be in front of a microphone and a camera. So Lisa McGee went all the way but unbred them with Derek Girls because she just hired everyone <laughs> from Ooh, her class. Weird. And But it was they, they were all, and this is going to sound, they were all brought in on their own merits. Of course. Because like I... I yeah, you're right. You could say, oh, yeah, you knew each other and you all went to university together. But look, that's because, yeah. But look at the cast. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, look at the people involved. They were all brought in in their own merit and they're all, like, the best at what yeah, they do. Like, Claire Rafferty as an actress, yeah. like, is literally and one of the so best funny. ever to come out of here. And she's hilarious. And Kathy Pryor is one of the most talented costume directors. Like, the one of the most amazing things about Dairy Girls is the costumes. Mm. Like, people constantly... I just, I just text her sometimes, just random stuff. Like the Where did old, you get? Oh, yeah. The old Dairy away jersey, right? With yeah. Smithix on it, right? I'll just text her. Where can I get Genius. <laughs> yeah. Where, and I'll go genius. Hoping, Kathy, if you're listening to this, someday she'll go, I still have that. Obviously, we're not making any more Dairy Girls. Would you like it? Do oh, you know? no. Oh, no. no. But it hasn't. Not, oh. not so I'm just hoping she that probably has somebody will of cool shit. point out that she was mentioned on this podcast, that I mentioned this in the podcast. She knows I've texted her about yes. this here. But maybe now That's not gonna you're happen. the bringing together of this. But And also, people don't know this. Um, some people might not know Kathy. As an actress, amazing. Oh, really? She was a class actress. I never knew. I never knew. Because we all had to do the acty thing. Oh, I had. Because it was drama. I don't when I was there. It was Queens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck all that when I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. was like, what is this? Yes. Doing like politics and all? Yes. And, like, yes. Yes. Like, I, want, I was going to say there, transubstantiation, but that's not what I meant. I meant existentialism. Existential transubstantiation. Is basically the same thing. Mm. I don't know. They're, they're both words. I remember getting like 17%. In like existentialism or something like that, it was the lowest mark I ever got. And I was <laughs> that uh, anyone ever got any, anyone ever got. I was just like, what is this? I need to be on stage. I want to. I want to be a tree. I hated that. And, I know. And you're like, come on, come on. Why are we writing stuff down? I remember um, we had to do this exercise with one of the chitters where we had to pretend to be a bag of sand. Yes. For approximately. 18 hours. <laughs> 18 hours? Well, like 10 minutes. Yeah, we, minutes yeah. we, we were a bag of sand and we had to like act out that a grain of sand was leaving the bag like slowly and gradually and that we would get weir and weir and weir because we were becoming a smaller bag of sand. Yeah, but hold on. It worked. So when you're sitting there and Tim McGarry is doing the first bit of the blame game, he's going into the intro. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, you're going... I'm a bag of sand. I'm a, I'm a bag, bag of sand. sand. Not a bag of shit. I'm a bag of sand. I'm a bag of sand. Yeah. I'm a bag of sand. See, it worked. Yeah. I can I can become smaller, <laughs> but I'll eventually refill. You will <laughs> refill. If if the world is the little shovel that puts it back in the bag, and there you are again. Are diamonds made out of sand? Possibly. I can't no. technically glass. confirm that. It's glass. Is made out of sand. Glass is made out of sand. Okay. That's a wee bit less... Like fancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, in essence, what we're saying, we started in the same sort of So as you're speaking about Ka- Cafe Pryor there, who's the costume director on Dairy Girls, do you see for Soft Border Patrol, mm. the other BBC show I was on, right? Uh, see, bag of sand. Bag of sand got you there as well. well yeah. Played. Well done. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, oh, and by the way, Karen Hassan, who was in that. Yes. Same class. She was in the same class as also well. Also in the same class. Yeah. Why did you not mention her? She was, she's a, she's she's a bigger brilliant. She's really good. Wrestling. She's <laughs> awesome. She's awesome. Good friend to this day. She's a lovely girl as she well. She's one of the nicest girls in the industry, I you think. You ever meet. Fantastic and, girl. And like illegally attractive. Very, very illegally attractive. Too good looking. Yeah. It's almost not fair. Somebody in the world is really ugly in order for her to be yeah. that good looking. She, she nicked all the good bits. She took it, she yeah. Did, she did. She, she must did. have really... Ugly siblings. Mm. So same class, all same class. <laughs> yeah, but she, so on soft border patrol, 
Because you hear these shows where they have massive costume budgets. Like I think Bridgerton had like millions mm. of pounds for like on the costume budget. You can tell it's unbelievable. But on Soft Border Patrol, so there was like 10 lead cast members of all like the officers and the people that worked out in the patrol. And there was two pairs of trousers. For all 10 people? For all 10 of us. I used to wear the same trousers as Neil Delamere. Oh, no, no. There, there, no One leg each. A weird grey cream colour? No, burgundy. Burgundy. Well, yes. is, that, is, is burgundy not grey cream? Absolutely Oh, burgundy's not. purple. Burgundy's purple, isn't it? You can tell you did drama, Sorry, queens. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was thinking beige. Burgundy's purple. So how does that work? So do you just shoot it? You don't shoot it all in the same day. It's all no. shot. So there were loads of people with pitch sketches for like all the officers to be in like a training day. Because yeah. we, we would shoot in twos so you would like shoot for like a week where like you and your partner me and Paddy Buchanan would be out in patrol and we would be shooting all of our scenes the people that we come into contact with for those couple of days and then the next week in would come say like Mickey Bartlett or Neil Delamere or mm. you know whoever else was and they would shoot for a couple of days so the costumes would just get washed and the new officers would wear you're them. a different shape to Mickey Bartlett Yes, but he Neil would wear Delamere. Paddy Buchanan shoes. Right, so Neil Delamere is this felt young, it was a wee thing. Like, yeah, yeah. You just, but, yeah, yeah, I know, but that's what I mean. But some people's trousers were hanging on them, some people's trousers were too tight in them, but you just had two pairs of trousers. And there Did was, nobody go, hold on a second, it's a trip to pennies. Did nobody go, it's 50 quid in pennies? It's, that's too much for the BBC and I. You, sh- you should know I, this. I'm fully you aware of the, the budgeting BBC. situation at BBC and I and I can't comment with that. Yeah. 50 quid is somebody's meals for the week. <laughs> so somebody's going hungry if I want a new pair of trousers. Like it's mad. And we would have to just like swap them about all the time. And so, so people would write in, you know, not write in, like people who were the writers for the show would pitch ideas of like, oh, all the uh, officers are together and like a big training. Someone would come in and train them on like, you know, ethics or mm. whatever it is. And they'd be like, we can't do that because we don't have enough trousers. We can't have all the officers in the one room. Because <laughs> you don't... The- There's no trousers. <laughs> I remember working on a TV show before and being told you've got a budget it's a wardrobe budget and you're like wow yes. and you're like oh my word I made it and you're like right you're going to get what do you want and you want these trousers and this top or this jacket and the suit and you're like oh great fantastic mm-hmm. all fitted brilliant for camera wonderful amazing I was like oh my god this is amazing look here I am and at the end can we have the suit back please I thought you were keeping wa- that I thought because it was a presenter thing ah. I thought because it was a wardrobe budget I was like Daddy's getting a new suit here. No. Daddy didn't get a new suit. No. Daddy was walking out of the, the, the place with just his pants on him. And his niggers. And his coat of wowser. <laughs> you arrived with no clothes. But I've, I've le- yeah, I arrived in my box just going, dress me, dress me. <laughs> so then you I, you learn and you learn. And I did, I did, a, I did a telly show there about um, three or four weeks ago. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. And it was the same yeah. thing. And I, I was told there's a wardrobe budget. At least at the end, I went, I know I'm handing these back. Yes. And I came with the full. Yeah, full, I know not to fart in these full trousers. Full out of clothing. <laughs> and, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting there going, OK, well, you know, there isn't as much money. It's not as glamorous mm. as we all think it is. Because you, every job, too, I always be like, oh, like isn't like you're doing there with the, the dairy top. Mm. You'd be like, oh, isn't this such a, aren't these such a great fit pair of jeans great on me? Great fit. Wouldn't, would they, it's like these were made for me. <laughs> and then you're sitting looking at the costume girl going, how much shit? Do you have in your house? Do you ever nick it? You don't need all this from set. I nick something from every job. I, I, I have very fun. Well, I, we, me, and my my lovely wife, who's been on this podcast. I, I, when Holly we, Holly Hamilton, when we, anyone. Holly Hamilton, yeah. hello. She never mentioned me by name in your podcast. I was just well, it was about husband. fifty-six minutes in, and I went. We should probably tell people that yeah. Connor Phillips. It's yeah. all right, it's all right. So I try and keep most telly jobs we do have a card. Mm-hmm. There's a card, you're going, hey, 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 welcome to the telly. Yeah. And you have a card and it says on it what it is and you, there's some notes on it and sometimes they're not for anything, they're just a hold. Yeah. And, so every telly thing we do, I say to Holly, keep the card. Yes. Just keep the card, keep the card, keep the card. And we're the process of maybe moving house soon, right? So our last house, right, I had all the cards in my office, every single one of them put up and it looked great. Now there were more in her cards than mine. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so and this is the thing, this is the thing I keep saying. That's great. Steal, she, won't, she, she won't take the card. But I have literally had to contact TV people that she, that she works for and go, how you doing? Listen, Holly's husband here. Would you make sure she brings one of the cards home? And I tell them the story and they go, oh, that's lovely. You have all the cards and they're all free. Yeah. In Aww. the house and they're all going to be class. up in the office. And she's like, she won't. She just but won't the, go. they're only going to the bin. That, that's it. Because it's just a piece of and card. Like, oh, it's awkward to ask for the card. Just ask for the card. Don't even ask for it. It's, you're in your, it's in your in hand. Your hand. And your handwriting's in the back of it. Aye. Take it with you. It's your notes. But back to what you stole from your set. That's all I steal. Oh, what did you steal? All the things. No, I would, I would, um, 
I have a, a box in my house of like one thing from each TV job or even theatre jobs as well. Mm. I take one thing from it. But a lot of times I like to take like the little thing that has my name on it on the trailer. Yeah. It has like the number beside it, what number you are. And then it'll have a print out of what the production is and your name on it. Or I have like... What or I have I'll take like the lipstick the character wears or I have the watch I wore in Soft Border Patrol. <gasps> Hold on, you had a there was a budget for a watch, but there was no budget for trousers. It might have been my watch. <laughs> what was your own watch anyway? <laughs> I just came home with it with all Woo! So I was like, that was already yours. <laughs> Neil Delamere is doing all his shots in his underpants on the way up so you can't see anything below the waist and you're yeah. there with your fancy watch. Look at I have. Hey hey, BBC budgets. What do I have from I think from Give My Happies, I have like a choker. Like I'd look at all those spiky chokers because yes. I feel like a golf in that. And you're just bits and pieces. Because I like someday to open it up and go, oh, remember when I used to do TV? <laughs> we do this podcast now instead. That's yeah. it. That's 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 where I am now. Remember when I used to earn money. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's like but you know what? Like, it's good. Everything's sort of back. There's stuff happening at the minute. Which oh, is, yeah. Jesus. It's, it's, it's flat out here. Which yeah, is brilliant. It's, it's nice. It's good. And, you know, even even being here today, like, you know, we can go back and do this. We don't have to have what a What was the thing you were shooting us. a few weeks ago? Um, It's going to be on... BBC not next Sunday night the Sunday night after that it's a it's a class idea granted I'm the presenter of it I'm going to say this okay so what they did was right during sort of the, the tail end of the pandemic right mm-hmm. they contacted as many key workers in Belfast as they could and they said here was there a song that got you through lockdown oh. and all the key workers went I like this song this song this song this song this song everything from like Orbital and Belfast to Elbow Day Like This through stuff from uh, The Greatest Showman, right? Right. So they all submitted them. And so what the BBC did was they went and got loads of good big acts. JC Stewart, uh, Foy Vance, Brooke Scullion from wow. Eurovision and the Ulster Orchestra. So they gave the Ulster Orchestra a chance, can you go and learn these, right? Invited as many key workers as they could to the Waterfront Hall. So all the key workers are there. So all the artists play a song that was recommended by one of the key workers. Mm-hmm. This is class, actually. And then a song of their own. They got to, to, to perform one of their own and songs. And did they say this song came in from? It, there was a whole video. There's a whole dedication. When the song made it, there was a full dedication video. This is from, like the Pride of Were people crying? So it's amazing. Oh, they were crying. The host was crying side stage. I would love that. I so love crying. It went, it, right, so they did all that, right? And at the very end... And I'm not spoiling this because it's going to be on the telly on the 25th of January, BBC One, Sunday at 7 o'clock. Right. Uh, Every key worker in Belfast has now got the freedom of the city. So if you're a nurse and you've got a flock of sheep and you want to take them up the middle of Belfast city centre, you can do it because you and they were all given the freedom of the city by the Lord Mayor. So hold on, what does the freedom of the city mean? I haven't a clue because there was a big (gasps) there was a big book that I wasn't allowed to touch, right? There's a big Can book. Look it up? There's the literally a book, right? And it's it's like 500 years old. And this, it's got it's got the list of all the people who've got the freedom of the city. And they had a, a bloke with gloves opening it up. And I was like, here, I can't touch this here. And I did touch it. Did you and, get it? And I got, the, well, technically, I'm a key worker. So yeah, technically. Hold on. No, hold on. So all the key workers in general or all the ones that were there? No, in general, in Belfast. So all the key workers in general? All the key workers have the freedom of the city. Was the key worker thing not a bit of a grey area? Well, I don't know. Broadcasters were key workers. I was in work every single day. <laughs> oh my god! I'm taking my flock of sheep down the middle of Belfast city centre. But you know, it's like, do you ever hear those like old laws that are still in yeah. place? Like on a Tuesday, you can't shoot your bow and arrow westward of Notre Dame yes, or something. That's that's all, it's, it's all in there. It's all in there. So it was all put together. The Ulster Orchestra played every song. That's class. With the acts. Yeah. Uh, I presented it, and the place was full. And I swear to God, it was genuinely right. Since. You know, thinking that I was a bag of sand at Queen's University, like you did. Uh, it's one of the best things I've ever done. It Aww. is absolutely amazing. And, and it's not like, I literally, I only just come in the middle and do the, da, 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 talk yeah. for two seconds and disappear again. But the, like, J.C. Stewart did Elbow Day Like This. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, wobble. Lift wobble. <laughs> and I had seen it in rehearsal about four times. Yeah. Your one, Brooke Scullion, did Never Enough from The Greatest Showman. Again, had seen it three times in rehearsal. Just That's a really hard song to sing. Unbelievable. I played it on the radio the other day as well and lots of people giving it loads of love. So it's it's, it's genuinely, it's class and there That's I was in, a... in my wee outfit. And... Do you find out what it means? What, what, what does it mean? There's no benefits anymore. It's purely just an We've honorary We've just shot on your award. show. It means nothing. <laughs> but watch the show. It's really good, right? 
Yeah. Right? I'll, I swear, look, I'll take some sheep down the middle of Belfast City Centre. I'm happy for the, to get arrested, to promo <laughs> this show. BBC won't be too happy with it. No. But just me and 11 sheep walking down. You're they're like, all over the place. Everyone's got the fit in the city. Everyone's crying their eyes out. Yeah. They've got a wee fake key in their hand. Yeah. Fuck all. <laughs> I've got a staff. <laughs> me, me shepherd's hooker, me staff yeah. going, I'm on route. I'll see you. <laughs> I'll see you out front of the, the, the city centre. But it's class. It's good. That it's really, sounds like a very nice thing to be part of. It is. And we, we did loads of stuff in the pandemic because we I was on the radio right throughout it. We did mm-hmm. we were off, we did five days a week, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week, sometimes, depending on what radio station I was working for. And it was just like you became this people were like, Hey, the world is shit and I'm really annoyed with the world. But they needed something that, that they could rely on every single day. Yeah. And if it was just me messing around on the radio for yeah. ninety minutes. It was class. And Especially this during the first lockdown because, let's face it, everyone was out in their garden in the sun having mm. drinks, building, decking out of pallets with their radios on. Yeah, and doing like doing doing their their, their workouts because everyone yes. got really fit in lockdown one. And really fat in lockdown and two. Lockdown three. Lockdown yeah. three to me was the obesity lockdown. I think I got pregnant in the second or third one, so I did get... I, we part. got pregnant in the first one. Did you? Yes, when, the, when we were all doing the fitness, the workouts. I'm not... I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm merely saying I extended. She's like, Joe Wicks didn't say this was okay, Potter. Yes, I extended my workout. Put your knickers back on. <laughs> Cannot possibly comment. It's a very sensible broadcast. <laughs> yeah, um, we were pregnant during, during lockdown one. Uh, the, our pregnancy was mad. So lockdown one, and I know my wife told the story of how we got engaged. Yes, because we both got engaged in, in Edinburgh, Edinburgh in, in the podcast. And I wanted to tell the other story, the, the pregnancy story. Right. So I... I Here, just so I know I've done IVF, but I do know how other people get pregnant. <laughs> well, when a man and woman are very much in love, right? Um, so we we were uh, d- doing the stuff to, get, to mix the baby. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> but you don't, you, don't, you don't know straight away. You don't know what the story you're is. Pregnant? Yeah. Um, so I came back. We were living in England. We were living in England since 20, sort of 13, 14. And then it was lockdown 120. So the wee man's what? 18, 19 months now. So add nine months onto that. So two and a half years yeah. ago, right? And we came back. But I came back on my own. Yeah. Because I got off of the job in Radio Ulster and I was like, oh, right. Um, well, I'll go and see what the crack is with this job. See yeah. if maybe we'll come back home. I don't know. So I came home and I lived in a, you know, remember that you, when you couldn't be around anybody, you yeah. couldn't be around your parents, your grandparents. You were your own bubble. I lived in a one or two bedroom apartment in the middle of Newry City Centre on my Toblerone. Oh. That was it. That's, I, that would be awful even non-pandemic. How dare you? Um, <laughs> so I was like out running on my own, out doing stuff on my own and, you know, FaceTime and hello, how are you? How's things? Grand, yeah. And it was just getting tedious and she was like, oh, I'm going to come home as soon as I can. But the flights were all, there's no flights. Did you know she's pregnant? No, so this is it. So I'm I'm at home, right, in my wee apartment in the middle of Newry that I was renting for God knows how many months or days or weeks or years. And uh, Holly says, do you want to... do you want to get dressed up and have dinner over Zoom? And I was like, uh, ah, do you know what? I, I, yeah, I could, yeah. That's cute. But I went out for a run and I got, it was lockdown one, everyone was, thought they were Joe Wicks and I was looking, oh, I have to be home in 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, I'm more than 10 minutes from home. So I ran from, I'm like, I'm about 20 minutes. I ran too far. Not run very fast. So I ran too far. <laughs> so, like, I, so I'm going to have to turn on my heels and, and run back. Yeah. So I'm, um, Running and texting, going, I'm going to be late. And she was like, Oh, but I really want to. Can you be there at six o'clock? And I was like, oh. So I get into the house about eight minutes past six, right? Sweat dripping off me, right? And I was like, It's Zoom. She's not going to know I didn't have a shower. Yeah. So I ran in and just put a shirt on, right? Just a shirt. Classic, yeah. And everything else was, you know, a boxer, the whole lot, right? Yeah. I was sitting there. And then she's like, Oh, and she's dressed gorgeously. Oh, my wife's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But she was uber beautiful then. And I was like, Oh, you look lovely. Oh, my God. Mm, you were late. Mm. And I was like, I was sorry, I just I didn't realise how, how far I'd run them, ripen the sweat off my brow. I was like, you know, so what did you make? And she showed me her sweet potato fries and chicken. And I was like, oh, there's my sweet potato fries and chicken. We made the same thing. And we're sitting there. Mm-hmm. And she's so how are you? And I go, I, I just, the feeling, you're at something. You're at something. You've got the twinkle in your eye. You're you're doing something. What? She was like, oh, hmm. And there was like a silence. And I thought it was the Zoom had cut out. And then she just, uh, from the side of the computer, held up the pregnancy <gasps> test and I went what and I just went bump tears of Aww. tears of joy tears of joy and it was the Sunday previous remember the absolute disaster we all had let's do a zoom quiz yeah 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 I swear I, to god I partook I partook whatever it is in one of those and after that I was like 
There was nope. a th- there was a thing that my wife's family were doing. They wanted to do them every Sunday. Right. Right. My wife's family. You're probably listening. You know you. You know they are the worst people for timekeeping. Right. Right. They would be late for everything. They're late leaving the house. They're late getting the things. My wife's the same. And the Zoom quiz was never, well, Zoom quiz will be at two o'clock, right? I'll go home, get ready. I'll be in the Zoom quiz at two o'clock. Oh, it's not till three. Right. You can't just put it back an hour. Yeah. Right. It's either a two, ten past two is fine. Anyway, so they're having all these Zoom quizzes. We got to about the sixth or seventh one, right? And then we were hosting one and I was like, I need a drink. Mm. I am, I'm doing it. I'm drinking. I'm yeah. drinking, I'm drinking. I, the rule is, if I'm going to do this flipping quiz again, I'm drinking. Yeah. So I went and get a drink, and I was like, Holly, go and get a drink. And I was go, <gasps> Holly's sister, go get a drink. And Holly was, I've got a drink. And she had to pretend throughout the whole Zoom that she was drinking. No, was this the week before week she before, told you? Week before she told me. She had she to. She pre- knew for that long. She knew for that long. And she had, she says, because we never had time on our own. She wanted Aww. to make sure 100%. She wanted to do another test to make sure 100%. And she was pretending drinking. And I was sitting there going, yeah. <laughs> drink uh, I had me six bottle of me and she had you know, made like, this Holly one you not arguing with me exactly she must be yeah. a good drunk now <laughs> so that was it and then she showed and so she recorded the zoom you, you, there was no sound record but there's the zoom of her showing me the pregnancy test that and is me just lovely losing it and I was like oh my word and I was like come home and she was pregnant and I didn't see her for like another I don't know it must have been another two or three weeks after that that's why because you, could, you couldn't get home yeah. there's no flights you, 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 plus it was peak COVID and if you were flying you had to be you had to have brilliant reason for doing so do you know what I need to play for you the audio of when I told my ma and dad that we were pregnant because it is hilarious my ma loses her shit because they didn't know they didn't know that we had done IVF we done it, we kept it to ourselves mm. We knew people knew that knew, knew that we had to do it, but we oh do you know what? It's not even here. Um, that's not fun. Um, but so we we arrived. Oh, that was class. Yeah, that was audio so was class. Do you know I'll do it for you vocally because I'll do. I'll, okay. I'll recreate it. You'll be your ma. I'll be my ma. Okay, all right. For right. one time only. Okay, okay. What? Can, will I be you? You can be my da. Okay. What did you? No, hold on. That's D. That's D. Mm. Creep. How <laughs> do you know my dad's name? <laughs> you be you be me. Okay. And you hand me an envelope, and in (laughs) hi now, Brian. Is that your dairy accent? No, I'm just I'm trying to get into it. I go I go Belfast, and then I go to dairy. So I go hi now, Brian, and then I go to dairy, and then you go up a wee bit. That's a good dairy accent. Three three years. Why did Lisa not put you in? No idea. Why am I not? The rest of the dairy dairy boy. Every other actor in dairy (laughs) in the north (laughs) is in that. I'm not in that. It's like when they don't put Billy Connolly in a Scottish movie. Yeah, he doesn't get into any of them. (laughs) Or like. They don't put anybody from here in Game of Thrones because Olivia Nash saw me recently and she was like, Everyone from here in Game of Thrones. I was like, I'm not. <gasps> did you ever audition for it? I did. Yeah. I auditioned for a few parts of Young Queen. I was offered a part, but she had to be naked all the time. And I was all, I love wearing clothes. So you know, would you, not, would you not go on the nip? For a, for a certain for a certain job, I would. But did, you wouldn't have known how big Game of Thrones would have been. It would all, but it wouldn't. my part wouldn't have been big. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> The part what that don't I, we know about she, you? She was in and out. Right. And somebody else was in and out of her. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so you hand me an envelope okay. and inside that envelope was going to be a baby scan and oh, that, and I'll be my ma. Oh, mommy. Mom, what do you call Ma. Ma. What do you call your ma? Donna. No, what do you call her? Mommy. Mommy. Okay. <laughs> Donna. Do, are your ma and dad are D&D? Well, my ma and dad. So my dad's called D, my ma's called Donna. They put it together and got Diona. That's how my name's made up. Of the two? Diona? Aye. Double D? D? Dion, is that why? It's red. <laughs> what do I mean? Like, yeah, we're all DD. D- oh, DD. My brother's called Darn. We're all DD from Derry. We're like the Kardashians of Wow, Derry. they say that. They yeah, say that. well, yeah. that's what they say in Derry. Yeah. They've yet to give us the freedom of the city. Yeah. But... Uh, well, listen, you did you live in Belfast over the last while? Over the last while? Did you do any key worker stuff? Well, you I are, think the, I did. You technically have the key to freedom. <laughs> Screw Derry. You yeah. have the freedom of Belfast. Bring on the sheep. There you right, go. Hand me envelope. All right. Oh, oh mommy. Mommy, I've got an... Mommy. Mommy, I've got an, an envelope <laughs> for <laughs> you. Mommy, here. Here. Oh, what's on here? Oh, fuck. What's on here? Is this your results? Okay. Do you say results? And then my mat opens it up and she goes, <gasps> Dara! Sean! Dara! Sean! I'm all... Oh, no fucking jogging. <laughs> she tells, what? She tells me not to jog immediately. I've never jogged in my life. <laughs> Your mother's first thing was to tell you not to partake in exercise. No fucking jogging. <laughs> like I'm all. She goes. I'm all. Ah, no fucking jogging. I mean, if if 
Now, as you sit there as a, as a very spelt, thin, healthy looking young lady, for a split second I thought, Diona must be into jogging. Never. She must She must be pounding the roads, so to speak, every single night. Don't even the mother, own a pair of <laughs> the mother must be saying, you need to cut that back for if you're pregnant, you need nope. to look after your body. She's Why just did decided she go there? She, if she picks up jogging now. <laughs> This is the time after all her, her UVF, whatever you had, IVF, yeah. uh, that, that now was the time to start yeah. jogging. That I'm go- yeah, after six, seven years of trying to have a baby, three weeks pregnant, I'm going to take up and I'm going to start doing telly. couch to 5k. <laughs> you saw Paula Radcliffe and you went, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Well, that's a mad yeah. thing to say. She was hilarious. But then Sean remixed it and it's into a song. I need to send it to you. It's so funny. Like it is... Joanne, go text him and hopefully he can send it to me before the end of the um, podcast because it is so... F- he, he like... Sean does this thing every now and then where if something... Somebody has said something funny mm. on like a WhatsApp video like one of our family members, he'll remix it into a song. Yeah, yeah. And it's it takes up way more time than <laughs> than it's worth. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, like I said, I've I've done things with your husband. You've done things with my wife. You've... Sean... I, has Sean done things with my wife? Um, probably stuff we don't know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, do you know what? Did Sean ever have her on one of his podcasts over the years? Very possibly. I remember the last, I remember your your lovely husband, right. Sean Haggerty, we're talking about here as well, because I want to point that out, because they talked about me on the last podcast and didn't even name check me. So Sean Haggerty, amazing comedian, <laughs> uh, fantastic uh, entertainer. Hold on. Oh, sorry. He deserves a bit of love, right? Um, I remember the first time me and Sean worked together. It was for a large... Uh, cider company they were sponsoring comedy was it Harp? no Magners it's, 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 it was Magners I, yeah, I keep thinking I'm in the BBC you're not in the BBC I can anymore say, I can say, I can say yeah. so we, we did a thing I think it was down was it Mandela Hall? no it was down we did that as well yes that was actually quite good um, we did a thing in the same sort of run right down in where Belsonic is yes and they put a big white tent down there oh. and it was the time they had like they had they had invited guests and they were all like they were all half cut right but Sean I had heard Sean doing his stand up, and I've heard Sean doing his uh, his one liner stand up. Yeah, and they're two different shows, mm-hmm. right? The one liner you have to listen, yeah, and you kind of it's for a very specific audience, yeah, right, and it's brilliant when it's done properly. But when someone comes expecting a stand up, mm. and they end up getting a one liner, and they're going, "Okay, that was funny," but where's where's, where's the story? Where's the anecdote? Where's yeah, the thing yeah, yeah. you tell me about the sex between you and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Connor's I wife know. or whatever? So <laughs> he, I never forget it by the poor man. By he, Did he die in his hole? Oh, it wasn't his fault. Because oh. I got to go out to the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome. Yeah. I'm Connor. We've got comedians coming up, and I was able to tell a wee anecdote and go. And I'm not a comedian. Yeah. And Sean came out, and I had heard both of Sean's shows, and I thought he was going to do the the, the normal show, the yeah. show. Where, but he was asked very specifically by the comedy company yeah. just to do his one-liners, and yeah. I was like, "Going, oh no, he oh, died in his hole. They didn't like it. We've they all did, done that. Oh my word! And I was like, "How did they pick? Do Why you, did the? Do you know where I'm not funny? Where are you not? Enna Skillen. Oh, <gasps> shut up! Not funny, Enna Skillen. Right? They don't. Uh, they don't. Nobody laughs at Enna when I speak. <laughs> okay, is it an no, anti dairy thing? Do you think? No, I gigged there a few about two months ago, and it was the worst gig of my life. They were a lovely audience, and it wasn't their fault. It was probably my fault. I had a bad gig. When I joke when it was their fault, they were yeah, shit. Their fault, um, their fault. But it was oh my god. It, there's nothing worse than leaving a gig going. That was tough, and you just have to get through it. And also, you run through your like, say you're on to do twenty minutes, and yeah. you just fire through it. And you're done in like eight minutes, and you're all shit. Do I have to stay on this crowd game? work now for twelve minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they already hate me. So what's the point? Am I right in thinking that you wanted to, or you're still interested in, or you considered the possibility of trying stand up before? So it was that thing. So I was hosting that uh, event in the Mandela Hall. Yeah. Right, and. The radio station I was working for at the time was but was sponsoring it or co-sponsoring it or something to do with it, and they were looking to host. And I was the one that was a bit. I would go. I'd be risque. I would, you know, I could throw the odd joke on that. I'd have no problem with a uh, um, crowd. No yeah. bothers. I've I've always done work with crowds before, so it never made me nervous or anything. And they said, "Look, like a day before they went, look, we need. We we've, we've worked out the timings. Yeah." We had some brilliant people. Sean was on. Colin Geddes was on. Uh, PJ Gallagher from Dublin was on. Yeah. There was people from England. It was, it was over two nights. And they said, look, we've worked out the time and there's a bit of nine minute gap. Can you fill for nine minutes? And I went, uh, 
Uh, that's yeah, a long that's time, a long time. Too, yeah. And I went, right, tell you what, I just went and I started writing some stuff down and I started watching comedy and I was like, all right, well, how do, okay, right. So I did the nine minutes and oh. nine became 15. Oh, right. And then I did, I sort of two mini, I was the compare. Yeah. You know the compares do a set. Yeah. And the next night I did the two mini sets, I did two nines. And I was like, right, I was crowd work and 18, stuff like that there. Fast math. 18 full minutes. <laughs> um, and I was like, that was glad. I'll, I think I'll do this. I think I'd love to do this. And then it's just the presenting stuff and the radio stuff took over, took, uh, took off. Yeah. And then I was like, and I remember ringing people like um, Jake O'Kane and yeah. having the crack around Jake, well, what do you think? What do you, what do you reckon? He was like, yeah, you could do it. And then started, w- then ended up moving to England and stuff and got sucked into the world of serious journalism. So oh, shit. Brexit, right? Hmm. I covered all of that in England. Right. I covered that all across England. I was like, oh, and I was like, I like this. It's actually, it's it's really, it's good fun actually. Right. Doing the serious stuff. Was it? And people who listen to me in Radio Wallstar might not know me for that. Yeah. But I loved it. And then uh, my wife always said, look, if you get a chance to come back and be a wee bit more yourself and, you know, have a bit of crack, always take it. And that's the Radio Wallstar show now. Yeah, yeah. So. Is it something that you would do, like you would look into? Or it, you no, would... no. If, if someone said to me. Yeah. We need a compare. Yeah. We need someone to fill nine minutes. Yeah. Can, can you do it? Yes. Yeah. I, but will you're, I, you've no interest in like doing the like comedy circuit and not gigging really, in clubs? Yeah. Not really. Because okay. I've, I've I was a DJ in nightclubs for 10 years. I couldn't... I've been in that world yeah. where you're leaving the house at 7 o'clock. You're not getting back till yeah. midnight, 1 o'clock. The money's not as good as people think it no. is. Um, everything has to go well for it to be good. And like, But if someone said to me, we need a compare, we need a host with 9, 10 minutes of material, it's I could never It's a very specific thing where you're like... I'll do a, a compare set for nine minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like, or or like 18, if somebody minutes. approaches you and they're like, we need a guy for 11 minutes, you're like, I'm not your guy. Not your guy. I've already said yeah, I'm me. the nine minute guy. Nine minute guy. <laughs> now, if you want eight, I'll give you eight. I'll do it quicker. But I expect me to do it at, <laughs> at, at, at one point. 1.1% speed. It's yeah. almost like the wee button on your iPod yes. that goes faster, yeah. which would bring me in on the eight. Or you could just finish halfway through a sentence Go. on eight minutes and be like, guys, the rest of that was fucking fire, but you just won't leave hear it. it. I'll leave that with yeah. you. I'll leave that hanging. So no, I've no I've no real interest in doing it. I love the serious stuff. I love, I actually do like the hard politics stuff sometimes. I really? like doing it. I'm doing a lot of it with Five Live now at the moment and I love it. I really mm-hmm. like it. And it's very difficult to do both. You can't be a funny bloke, Right who's on stage talking about your private area or your your, yeah. your bed romantics. Yeah. And then two nights later, you know, I I, I had a, I interviewed Anne Whittacombe there about six weeks ago about the potential new prime minister of Great Britain. Right. It's, it's yeah. an odd, it's an odd one. But like if someone is... I mean, the blame game seems like the perfect place for that because that's like mm. you t- talk politically, but you can also be funny. Yeah. yeah but that's yeah. where I learn all my information. Like the other day I was going... <laughs> Should start watching the news again. The blame game's coming up soon. I'd like a crash course before the series and be like, start start learning what's happening. Well, that's the why world I love again. Neil. That's why I love Neil, Neil Delamere in it because well, he's a fucking genius. Though. We had a we, he was on my radio show and we we talked about this, and I was like, about how I don't know anything about politics. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what we spoke about. <laughs> we just did all links. <laughs> we, we said we said um, I said look, Mexicans as I said to him. Oh, where's this going? <laughs> don't generally work up here mm-hmm. I've never seen someone from the south come and be part of this whole sort of comedy era. in the industry in the industry no no Neil is no. the only one but the other way around sometimes it works yeah. you can be northern and and do well in the south mm. but the other way around and I said to him what, how have you nailed this and he went I learn everything he does he is he is BBC and I on the on, on the, on Neil the laptop knows he knows more. inside out and you kind of yeah. go you deserve your success up here. Oh, yeah. Like, his biggest gigs were the SSA Arena in Belfast. Yeah. And rightfully so. He's so well-informed. Like, he, he'll be doing a joke sometimes. I'm like, it's so embarrassing that I have to be like, no, no, what's that mean? Because <laughs> I live here. I'm from here. Do you know what I mean? And then he he just, he just he's so well-informed yeah. politically, even culturally. And, like, every he'll make jokes about, you know, a presenter or somebody who, like, died 30 years ago and something funny they did then. I'm like, I don't even know who that person is. How yeah. does he know all about... I know, yeah. He just, I suppose he just takes time to do that. He does. No, I, I, he knows that's, his, that, that's, that's where yeah. his, his... And it works, because then I suppose you're, you're, you're selling tickets. Although I was texting him last night, and we, it was in our, our blame game group, 
and the producer he'd said something like we were talking about changing the blame games coming up this autumn we're doing all of November all of December and they'd be like oh the, the, remember there's this like, potential there'll be a snap election and he was like um, oh potential we have to move the blame game earlier in October and I was oh well I can't do it guys because I have bridesmaids that's available to buy tickets at the Grand Opera you, you haven't mentioned that yeah <laughs> Um, I've been listening to your podcast coming in to do this and listening to Hollywood it's the first time heard it's just the first time I've, ever, I've heard you talking Price about that Northern Ireland it's good yeah <laughs> and I was like oh I'm, I'm doing or no, somebody home else home actually well. yeah, somebody home it was the producer actually went oh Neil, have you not got your tickets to Bridesmaids or whatever? And he was all, what's that? And I was all, are you taking the piss? Neil, I've done nothing but talk about this. And he was all, oh shit. And I was like, there's no internet down south. And then he was like, I was like, all this shit that you know, <laughs> everything that's happened in every corner of the north and you don't even know about Bridesmaids and I constantly fucking bang on about it. And I, But in his tour, I said, I fucking know all about your tour, Liminal, has done about three million dates. It's like, do you know Joanne McNally? Yes. And she's done like a million dates of her mm, new tour. She's here on the 13th and the 14th of October. How, she, how do I know that? Because she probably was on your video yeah, show. Yeah, she was. Thanks for listening. Yeah. When was she on? So you're, it's a couple of days ago. So you're <laughs> banging on about Neil not knowing about you because you've been talking about it. But here I am. She was on my show. You weren't listening. I but um, and then I like each other. So. Yeah, true, 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 true. And you work together. But well, ever, I was only in your black box thing. I wasn't a big part of your life. Come here. Have you ever had somebody on your show that you are like a big fan of and you're a bit like, oh my God, I can't believe they get to talk to these ones on air? Uh, yes. Oh, specifically in the last couple of years because lockdown meant everyone had a Zoom. Everyone was available. And yeah. Everyone was available. Like Ricky Gervais was unbelievable. Oh, yes. Yeah. He was just like. I watched his show the other night. But I. I, I his tour. I, like, he's so divisive, but I you cannot but. L- like even his work ethic and what he yeah. does and how he writes and all the success he's had in the office and then yeah. the stand ups and, and and everything. Sometimes he says a joke and it's like it's even worse than one of yours. Like yeah. and you're going, whoa, did he say that? And you're you're taken aback. But talking to him mm. was was brilliant. And like the bits, do you know what I like as well? The bits before it. So you're in the Zoom bit and you're going, okay, right. And he's got a, you have a PR person in one window and you've got his manager in the other and you've got yeah. me and you've got Ricky in the other. And then they're gone. And then my producer going, well, hold on a second, we just get the recording equipment. And you just chat. You just have the crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just having a chin wag. That's the best you're like, bit. I'm sitting here having a wee black That's friendly. the best bit. Yeah, that, I know. You're just going. But it's not work. Well, Ricky Gervais, what's the crack? Stephen, uh, Stephen Fry was the same. Yeah. And he was like, um, we, he, he, had, he was doing a book called Fry's Ties, right. which was just, uh, he said it himself. He just, Is he that likes, a selection of brides he's ordered? To, uh, he's got ties, right? Ties from round his neck. All right, okay. I want him back on my show, so I'm not saying anything, right? <laughs> so he ties around his neck, and he made a book called Fry's Ties. And we come up of weird ways of using Stephen Fry's ties n- name for other TV oh, shows, right. not as ties. <laughs> so the one we come up with was Fry and the Ointment. So basically, we send him around the world to get massages, get uh, ointmented it up, yeah, and 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 he gets massages, and we think this would be a brilliant TV show. We pitched loads of TV shows to him in the interview, and he was finished with the interview, and he was like, "My word, that was brilliant." I haven't laughed that hard and uh, no, he's probably said that to everybody he's interviewed yeah. that day or interviewed him in that week but he was just like his was after the interview he was just the crack he was brilliant he was lovely I watched Ricky Gervais's show there the other day and his Supernature show on Netflix mm. I am a massive Ricky Gervais fan I think he's brilliant and I because I think what he does differently to like Kevin Bridges is obviously amazing as well he says so many things I think um, you know, he like he people see him as like offensive, but he's not offensive. He's yeah. just like saying anything that we're thinking. But Ricky Gervais, I think, does the same sort of thing. And he did this section about people who <laughs> need to get. And I, I, I was on a plane, and I was between these two guys, and I could not stop laughing out loud. It's very hard to make me laugh out loud watching comedy. And I was like, I am looked at them, and I was all, I'm so sorry. Do you like that video of the girl on the train that everyone else starts laughing, yeah, and the yeah, two yeah. guys were all, well, what are we laughing at? You know. And he was talking about like, you know, people who are like really big and have to get craned out of their house. And like, it sounds like it's going to be really offensive because he's talking about obese people. But the whole time he's like, I'm obese. It's, I can talk about like, he goes, obese people having a great time. They've eaten and drank whatever they wanted their whole life. They're loving it. It's, it's fine. And he was like, talked about it. He goes, you see if you're, <laughs> you've been clawed out of your bedroom window and you're hanging by a crane in the air and you see a film crew, you know you fucked it. <laughs> So the, so the people it. in the plane going, see that bitch from Soft Border Patrol? She is, she was, a, we couldn't get her to stop <laughs> laughing. She was doing that. And a fat joke. And a fat joke. I was on a plane before and the girl beside me was watching Soft Border Patrol. No way. Swear to God. 
It's an critiquing odd one. it. She had a notebook out. No. But she was sat beside me watching Soft Border Patrol, and I swear to God that I not do this for half the flight. <clears throat> <laughs> like trying to get her attention all the time and then she eventually saw me and I was like hey, yeah. how you doing you enjoying that How's show going? how you doing Garth Brooks was another one uh, he was watching Soft Border Patrol he was playing. watching Soft Border Patrol <laughs> no actually he was watching Soft Border Patrol followed by Dairy Girls and then he said he had a, he had a copy of something that was on in the black box some years ago <laughs> he, had, he had a video of it he was a brilliant one uh, I interviewed him twice yeah and I grew up in South Armagh and it's full of cultures who love country music yeah right? yeah yeah I'm sure and, he's a big hit uh, he's massive yeah. right huge and, but I wasn't a ma- I'm not a massive country music fan my dad is but I kind of absorbed his music by osmosis mm-hmm. and then all my friends and people I know are big massive fans so I interviewed him in 2014 for the concert that never happened yes right and I went and interviewed him for that and then I got, I got the call there for this concert that is just I don't know this air is what when is this air next week yeah it'll just have happened okay. right um so, hello everyone who enjoyed the Garth Brooks concert, the one that you and just enjoyed. And he, I ended, got to interview him again, and it was the weirdest thing. I told him a great story. It's a good story. My mum and dad were in the audience, right, mm-hmm. for the concert in 1997, right? right? And knew some of the people who were doing the organising and some of the security guys. And I said, listen, do you used to, would you used to go over into that section there? Because Garth's going to film the thing for his video. It's like he walks past and gives loads of high fives, and they're right. going to put it in the video. And the Christmas present from my mum and dad that year was the video. We never paid any attention to it. And there's my mum and dad in the video, <gasps> right? Told Garth Brooks the story in 2014. Invited mum and dad to, to, to Garth Brooks. Yeah. Never happened. Yeah. Told him the story again there. And he goes, I remember you. Was this the one with your mum and dad in the video? I'm going, shut up. Oh, wow. So we ta- I, this was before we turned the cameras on. Again, yeah. it was the bit of crack. So I says, look, I'm going to tell that story now. Are you okay with that in the, in the interview? Yeah. And he was brilliant. And he was like, yeah. It's so amazing that he remembered. And you're like, well, you're not, I don't know how many stories like that he's going to have. But I mean, you know, even just like the amount of somebody as huge as that, the amount of interviews mm. they do and the amount yeah. of like press things that they do. And I'm sure sometimes they zone out, but he obviously... He was brilliant, and he, he was he was so gracious and nice. Hold on, I have it here. <laughs> I have a copy of it. Do you? I want to see if Sean has sent me that that there thing of my ma because it's fucking hilarious. Do you know my ma every now and then would tell me about stuff about I you and Holly? Like, about me and Holly? Yeah. Why if you're she... talking about because my mum did listen to your show, and if like um oh he's just throwing it at the moment doesn't matter I'm not gonna get it um. <laughs> every now and then she'd be like I um okay so there we boys doing great sleeping through the night now and I'd be like. Who? Oh, the wee Finn. He's sleeping through the night. Now, Bill, how the, f- how the fuck do you know Holly and Connor's son, Finn? My mum and dad were here in 1997. It was our Christmas present to them, right? And they were down there just leaving Croke Park just as you were finishing. And then they were grabbed by some of your people and they said, listen, would you like to stay back and do a little bit with Garth where he yeah. runs along the audience, high fives, high fives, high fives. And if you buy the DVD or video of the 1997 gig in Croke Park, there's my mum, oh, there's my dad. Great. So I'm doing nothing else but going to get my mum and dad to the concert which is coming on Friday the 9th and Saturday the 10th September 2020 uh, Maureen and Terry so Maureen and Terry thanks for the help there you uh, go I hope this one makes that one look dull <laughs> you were here in That's it. well can I just say that as the difference between you and I right is that you immediately had that video footage on your phone it's on TikTok it's on the TikTok I think that classifies you as a bit of a narcissist yeah oh, I am me, a narcissist I completely am I don't have any of that it's shit the difference, it's the difference between Holly and I like like I have heard I heard her doing this podcast yeah to get ready for this podcast yeah Holly has not heard herself back in this podcast oh why never listens to herself never watches herself has I just she can't get to why she's not improving cringe is she not getting better every time <laughs> Where I seen this goes out, I listen to this here. I yeah. watch it. I listen back to some of my shows. For the critique. For the critique. No, I'm just a narcissist. Yes. That's why. <laughs> no, no, you, you're always looking to, to, to get better. Yeah. And uh, some of your production crew here work as my production crew occasionally on my <laughs> show. And I'm not sure if my radio show is getting any better or not. So I'll have that critique after the show. What is the big ambition? Do you have like a specific thing that you're like, that's what I want to achieve? I, 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 thankfully, I got the opportunity uh, about what? Six or seven weeks ago, Five Live was always my thing. Yeah, I, it was my from I was a small, tiny little amoeba of a presenter. It's all I ever wanted to do. Really? But if people don't really know this about me, I always kept it quite under wraps. Yeah, because you sort of it's quite a vulnerable thing to tell people what like. Yeah. Oh, this is the because f- if you don't achieve it, yeah. or yeah. Yeah. people so might go. Oh, that, that was my thing. Five Live, like a, a like Radio Two. Everyone says to me, "Why would you go to Radio Two? And I've I've piloted for Radio Two, and I've, I've met with people in Radio Two, and it was I was always like, "Look, by the way, if they're listening, I'll come and work in Radio Two. Mm-hmm. Um. 
but I, there was something always that I was a Five Live listener. I was a, a DJ and I would travel for hours in the middle of the night to go to a random fucking 16th or 18th birthday party. I'd be going, hey, check, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <laughs> the the chicken goujons are now being served. I was that guy, right? Yeah. But it meant driving hours through the night and I always had Five Live on and I always listened to it and mm-hmm. I always listened to the presenters and I was always obsessed with it and then I became obsessed with it as I got older and... And then I, I just did, I did all, I did like 10 shows for them there. In oh, did a, you? About, about two months ago. And it was just like, this is amazing. It's amazing. It's the thing I always wanted to do. And I was like. So you've ticked the box. The box is ticked. I, I would like to continue ticking said box. But yeah. it's like uh, your first couple of links. Yeah. And then the jingle comes on. The jingle that I've been listening to since I was a teenager. Yeah. And you have to go, it's like, how am I here? Yeah. Talk now. That's that's rude. Talk talk now. Talk now. Do the talky bit now. Yeah. But it's weird. It's different because my Radio Ulster show is quite upbeat and we don't talk about politics. Mm -hmm. Zero. It's the rule. No politics because we have a politics heavy show on for us, a politics heavy show on behalf. So they want me not to. But then I like going into that headspace and stuff. So doing that and probably, and I've always said, is working more with her, her nibs with the other half with Holly yeah we get to do bits and pieces together what would be your dream job together me and her doing the one show together there you oh go. my god that would be go. unreal sticking that out there universe if you can make that happen yes so we did we've done our own version of it here we've done a thing called NI Trending here which was decent um, yes I remember that we did, did some stuff uh, Shane was on that wasn't he uh, Shane and Holly, yeah, Shane yeah. was on that, yeah. So yeah. we did some stuff um, for, uh, yeah, no, but you were on the blame game. We knew you were coming to blame I game. I was on the blame game then. Yeah. And you said Jamie Leo on didn't you? And, and, and. Destroy my fucking who, life. Who, who, who made that? Green Egg. Yes, Green Egg. Yeah, that, that's why I was running on. on. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't involved with the bookings. Well, do you still have a wee fake contract you made up? Jamie, Jamie Lee O'Donnell from Derry Girls <laughs> is on it. So we did that together. We did a couple of things recently. Um, we've done sort of half a dozen wee bits and pieces. I'd just love to do more with her because <laughs> it's brilliant for childcare. Because it's Handy. been, we're both away. We don't have to do yes. that sort of crossover childcare. I and remember, like, sh- do you know, like each year there's like, the BBC have like a, all, this, all the pitches have to go in for like mm. new ideas for shows and stuff and every year you have like a few production companies that sort of touch base with you going like right what can we come up with or whatever and every every year <laughs> Sean and I not now because we have like a, a child and we're like this wouldn't work every year we'll be all wouldn't it be so fun if like you guys like sent Sean and I like honeymoon destinations like five star like all around the world and we just like checked it out and like, wait, like just like tr- made it fun is the main thing yeah, and then yeah, people could yeah. like watch the show and be like uh, yeah that's somewhere I'll go on my honeymoon and laugh and e- like every year we'd be like would you not just send us on a fucking few honeymoons <laughs> they haven't Nobody's the pitching the pitching process people don't realise how they're tedious. like we can't afford three pairs of trousers <laughs> on soft border patrol but yeah we'll send you to Mexico <laughs> All inclusive, baby. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the, the process, the the pitching process and tally process is it, it's it's tough. But no, I think you know um, a bit more stuff with Five Live later on this year, hopefully. Mm-hmm. And Holly, d- to do something more with her because we do actually do get on quite well. Do you know why? And you'll know this, right? Do you know when you're working on a tally program, right? And somebody is trying to soft soap something to you. Do you want to maybe if you would just if perhaps if you don't do it that way and we'll do it a d- different yeah. way. Let's try both ways let's when you know. Take a break in production for six weeks and just get you some mm, acting mm, lessons mm, and then we'll come back mm. and you can do it then. And <laughs> so, but Holly, Holly would be Holly was a brilliant producer before she was a presenter and she yeah. did a producer's head and she always goes straight into producer's mode and she literally will say Should no, just you? no, Connor, that idea is shit. Move on. And where if a normal person said that, I go how. Dare you say that to me? I know when she's saying it. Yeah. She's she's saying it because it's genuinely shit. And if we don't yeah. stop this now, we're gonna be here for another two hours waste talking about time. this here. Let's waste of time, waste of time. And at the start of it, I was I used to get a bit annoyed with her and go home and be and now I'm like, actually no, it's probably the best way to treat me. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. The bud. Away we go. Let's get the next bit on. So she's good to work with in that way. Yeah. And uh, you know That's how I treat Sean too. I'm like, don't encourage him. <laughs> Don't encourage don't him. Encourage That's him. exactly it. That's how she spends her life with me. Don't encourage him. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Sean, like, he, I, I have to nip things in the bud. And he, to be fair, there's the old time he has been right where I've been like, "That's a mental idea, Sean." And then he, do you know, years and years. I mean, years ago, like over a decade ago, Sean was like, "Podcasting's the next big thing. We need to do a podcast together." And I fought it. Or I was like, "I don't want to. Like, I don't sit and fucking talk for an hour. Like, mm. how shit." Imagine doing that. <laughs> I know. Imagine doing that. And we like did a podcast for a while, and I was like, I can't be bothered. Sean would do all the edit and all the stuff. I'm like a technophobe, like he was like doing it all, and then it faded away. It was years ago, but like Sean, 
over like oh, a long time ago for podcasting was big. It was like podcasting's the next big thing. And I literally used to be like, you're a stupid fucker, not that shape, shape, shape. And then now I'm all, he was right. He was right. And that, do, you, do you go home from this recording and say, thank you, thank you? No, go home be all, where's my dinner? Where's my dinner? <laughs> I was out working hard. Connor Phillips was an absolute diva. I had to put so much hard work in. Please, yeah. fish fingers and chips, please, for me. Where's my dinner, bitch? Um, right, before we finish up, I'd like you to tell me your remember when story, so your moment in pop culture history that had some sort of effect on you. Undercuts. Uh, do you mean in your hair? The undercut. The undercut. I, I ended up down... Uh, what do you call them, brothers? One of them was in Backstreet Boys. Cray. Carter's. Nick, Nick Carter, Carter and, and Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. So I not to be confused with Nathan Carter. No. Nope. For years, I thought he. Shut up. So on my life, <laughs> for years, I thought Nathan Carter was Nick Carter's younger brother from the Backstreet Boys, and that he now did country music. Oh, so you thought that was Aaron Carter? I thought that was Aaron Carter. So now he changed his 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 remit, and the, I didn't okay. even. I couldn't remember that the brother was called Arn. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh no, he's called Nathan. That's it. Nick and Nathan Carter. And then I was like, Nathan Carter is the guy from... And I was like, what a change. But sure, yeah, yeah. here we are. And he does the odd cover show on Radio All-Star just <laughs> to keep himself right. So uh, I was watching. I ended up down a, um, a, just a, an internet. Uh, um, this podcast that, pe- podcast that people put on Facebook and film it. Imagine filming your podcast. Hello, mum. <laughs> um, Facebook rabbit hole. And I ended up and a Nick Carter rabbit hole he was on doing something recently and then I went I made me go ah oh. I'm oh, sorry Aaron Carter and I went oh Nick Carter was his brother from Backstreet Boys and he had the most amazing undercut and the women loved him right and I don't have undercut hair I have big culty fluffy hair I, I can't curtains I can't get it to go across if you're the same hair as me you can't get it no, to I go don't. Per- yeah, do. <laughs> You, you can't get her to go per like I'm not I haven't got well, that hold on. fine don't skim over that hair, right? what hair do we have you, you fluffy culty hair Connor yes you've got it as well right so um, what sh- the fuck go like that go like that go like that oh no you hasn't you've got you've got a bit of you've got a bit of body to yours but I've got loads of hair right not that you don't I mean like it's fluffy mine's fluffy my hair's right? city hair city hair <laughs> I've got culty hair but I have my no, hair's from the big smoke I have no, my sister is Big microphone hair, me, my brother, in the same right. It's all, but we I haven't got the. You can't do yeah, the curtains. I can't do curtains. You've got a bull's lick, that's why. A what? A bull's lick. At the back. A bull's lick. Yeah. Cow's lick. Cow's lick. No, I don't have a cow's lick. That's 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 gel. I don't. Oh really. right. But <laughs> I I that I remember when like and and the blonde and and the curtains and the tips. Did you do the blonde? Oh, I did everything. I yeah. did everything. I tried to do it, and I I saw somebody. Walking down the the street, actually weirdly in this uh, uh, town or yeah. what is this? Is Hollywood, Hollywood town? I think town? it is. Isn't is Hollywood it a town? Town? Yeah, Large right. village. Saw someone the other day walking down, and it was like I was back in the nineties. He was wearing, and I kid you not, he was wearing a pair of Adidas popper trousers as mm. vintage chic, right? Yeah. I did this when they weren't vintage chic. Yeah. They were just in. Same. He was wearing um, just a t-shirt with them as well. A pair of Nick Air Max. And he had the amazing Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys hair. I tried and I tried and I tried everything to do that. And I just could not make it work. Isn't it wild how all of the stuff that we would have worn whenever we were younger and the styles and the trends. Mm. Like everything come, I remember my mum saying to me when I was younger, everything will come back around, hold on to your flares. And I'm like, wise up, that's so mental. But there's only a limited amount of trends yeah. and then they do come back around again. Back around again. Um, could I do it now, do you think? Could I, would I try? I would love, I haven't got a comb. Use oh no, fingers. don't, oh you're not touching my hair. No, Jesus, no. This is, not, right. this, is this is just sort of, <laughs> this, this is, this is, this is solid with like, all sorts of sprays and stuff but uh, I just thought I just it was the thing I remember really wanting oh, and getting annoyed did, you, did your did your mum ever cut your hair or did you always go to a hairdresser I went to a hairdresser called Margaret she was up the corner right Margaret was in her house she, no she had a wee tiny hairdresser right. and she was about for the borrowers about <laughs> a, a, 80 feet from my front door mum and dad's low Margaret if you're listening and I used to do this thing Margaret would cut my hair and I go Margaret my mum will sort you out with that and I would never have said to my mum oh <gasps> Will you sort the hairdressers out? And they became to a point where she went, Your mum didn't You were running out. up a tab. I was running up a tab and I didn't know. My mum was like, Get you up there, you with that woman 30 quid. <gasps> I was like, I, And that was a good while. And I was like, Yeah, I had to work that one off. Yeah. Holy shit. And she put the she put the the, the cap on me. The, yeah. The, for the highlights. The rubber cap and started pulling the wheels yeah, through. Painful. Made, you sn- made you sneeze and all. Mm-hmm. And started pulling them all through. And I and it looked like she. It looked like it looked grey. It didn't look blonde. Mm. And then I just. I, I, I always remember. 
the the Backstreet Boys, and this this is where when it came to a head, uh, the Odyssey Arena slash SSA Arena. Mm-hmm. Um, as Neil Delamere, he's performed there. Um, so so the, I get a phone call one day saying, "Look, the support act for the Backstreet Boys and New Kids on the Block yeah. is caught in Germany somewhere. Will you DJ?" before New Kids on the Block and Backstreet Boys at the Odyssey. And I went, Asher I might as well, right? Oh my God. It was brilliant. I've done a few of these, did Westlife and did uh, Enrique. Westlife and Demi during Lovato. their original run. And yes. Not, oh, right. 48th, 49th and 50th, the three concerts back to back. Anyway, so we did this here. And they said, will you come and do a wee rehearsal just to get sound checked and all this here? And I'll never forget, I was walking down the stairs and the Backstreet Boys and New Kids on the Block had just gone off and done their sound. And the Nick fella, the one with the lovely hair, just walked past me. And I just went, how are you doing? And he just walked past me. And I don't know what he does to his hair, even to this day. It was gorgeous. He, he was the biggest heartthrob. I, to, I'm a straight man, but if someone said to me, if I had to, we'd, we'd at least go I don't date. even think if it at was the case if you had to. I think if he literally looked in your direction. Well, he did. I uh, mean, my knees wobbled there and then. But didn't he go out with Paris Hilton for years? Oh, I think he did. Think he may have I think we're the de- they were together for years, yeah. and it was they were like bef- it was before the- she was massive, famous. Wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then she became famous. And then she became. But then do you know what? It was slightly before like um, Britney and Justin as well. Mm. There's always like a heartthrob couple. Yeah, but then the Justin, air. Justin was nothing to me because Justin had a big fuzzy culture head he on li- him. He had like a blonde afro. I could do that. That wasn't in any way. He, the other boys in in NSYNC. Yeah. They had the, some of them had the curtains yeah. and I was like, oh, he's he couldn't do a curtain though no, he he couldn't. Justin couldn't do a curtain but I have to say what he's done to his hair now looking well No, I like the wee like I kind of have it the wee side part and all yeah maybe a bit I'm a bit more Justin Timberlake 2022 are you into keeping your child's hair looking yeah. you, have you had a wee he had a wee haircut yet no, not no. I'm not allowed I want to I've been told no because okay. he, he has a weird head of hair. It took ages for it to grow properly. Culture hair? He's got, no, he doesn't. He's got his ma's hair. Protestant hair. He's Protestant hair, right. <laughs> uh, and she, he's got his, like his gorgeous wee head of hair, but she's like, no, I want it to grow out. Yes. And then we'll get it all styled. Yes. But I'm the one who, whenever he's getting a bath, I take him. He loves the hairdryer. He just goes, Vroom. Oh, does he? Points the hairdryer and goes, Vroom. Can't say hairdryer, but goes, Vroom. Right. So I put him on my knee and I, I, I dry his hair. Mm-hmm. And Holly keeps telling me how to do it. I'm like, shush. You've never dried a man's hair before in your life. I know how to dry my boy's hair. He's got <laughs> right. boy hair, and it's there's a way of doing it. It's not. I just want to dye his hair. Yeah, yeah. And then I get it all. I want an opportunity to tell her to shut up. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And she kind of can't argue with me. And then I put the wee part in it, and I got it. And he sends him downstairs, and she goes, "Oh, look at his wee hair. It's cute." And then like ten minutes later, it's full of shite and snots and stuff. Like I want their hairs regularly full of beans. Yeah, yeah. Beans and I don't mean big one. an excited no, hair yeah. style. I mean, <laughs> it's got it's Heinz beans it's, in it's, her hair. She's using Heinz as a as a as a, as a yeah. grooming product. Yeah. She make a seat, and then she go. Oh, and then it's just <laughs> all over her hair, and you're like, "There's a bath wouldn't have happened now." Yeah, I no, I love it. I love it. So I'm gonna make sure whatever he wants. Holly I'll... suggested whenever she was here on the podcast that we do a play date with our children, um, because they're of a similar age. Mm-hmm. I said probably not, like, but <laughs> no, that, we should. That works for me if we can do it around the pub. If there's a way, because oh, yeah. there is. Growing there, up, that you, was the thing that it was done for us. Well, I remember being in Wetherspoons in the airport, right? Ooh. And don't judge. No, I'm not. I'm like, I'm having like, a fry. No, I'm thinking busy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. But there was loads of kids running around, and it was like dead on. And I was like, mm. this is the best place in the world because pints are cheap, uh-huh. food's all right, <laughs> and it seems to be that the staff are looking after people's kids. And like. You're if you're only there if you're supposed to be there. Yeah. The chances of having someone who's maybe a wrong or something yeah. like like they're gonna be there, but every single one of their names is at the door. Yes. We yes. know they're we there. We know who's there. We know who's yeah. there. Do you mean like someone can't steal your child? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. You, could, you could be going like, well, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying they won't. But a child ended up in Beijing. <laughs> um, but I, I, yeah. So a play date to me it c- can be done, you know. Responsibly, obviously. Yes. I'm a very responsible. Like parent. get a babysitter and just go to the bar instead. Yes. We'll or do that. We'll get, do that. Get like you know, you, the thing about kids, they look after themselves. They play with each other. I don't think that's true, Connor. Do they not? I don't think. No, but I don't mean like. I think there's a problem in your parenting technique if you've yeah. thus far thought that 
they just look, <laughs> look after, after themselves. themselves. Maybe we're waiting until they're seven or eight. I'm that, starving. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, as this is not how I parent, by the way. Yeah. And I'm a very responsible adult. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Is there anything that you would like to plug before we leave? I know you're saying about when... The yes, uh, Sunday 25th. It's going to be an iPlayer if this is already... If this is in your ears after the Sunday the 25th of September. Uh, it's called Belfast Mixtape. It's called Songs of the Lockdown. It's class. Uh, keep an eye out I'll be on 5 Live I think coming up towards the end of the year and we have a new show starting on BBC One called Community Life which I'm filming Ooh. next week I think keep an eye out for that as well and then between half past 10 and 12 o'clock every day on BBC Radio Ulster the Conor Phillips show. show plug that plug. was that's a lot of shit that you're doing right now that sounds more imp- more impressive than it is takes about 45 minutes a day just yeah, yeah. well that doesn't make sense because your show lasts longer than Trust him, just a wee bit not much <laughs> not much my, my day is just taking beans out of my child's hair yeah Oh. Thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure.